So, I am currently working on making my wedding dress. And I kind of want to document everything that I do just because it's kind of exciting. And I know that, at least for me, I've been doing a lot of research in this process and I think it could be helpful to other people who might want to also make their wedding dresses. Um, yeah, so I've actually already filmed this intro before, but I accidentally deleted it. Oops. Um, yeah, I filmed it a long time ago, so I don't remember what I said in that one or what I planned on saying or what I, like, plan on saying in this one. Um, but the good thing is that a lot of stuff has changed since that video that I recorded, so I can kind of actually say what I'm doing instead of, like, what I was thinking about doing, if that makes sense. So, <laughs> to start out with, I guess I should probably pull out my sketch for my dress because that's probably the best way to show what I'm going for. So this is the overall design that I am going for. Um, there's going to be like, there's going to be a nice lace overlay. I may or may not bring the lace down to the skirt as well. Um, we'll just see how things work out, um, and I may or may not actually add sleeves. I might just do like a sort of like cap sleeve type of deal. Um, let me see. I think I've been. Yeah, this one's actually really similar, but because um, I my wedding is in August and that's gonna be like really really hot, so I don't know if that's the greatest idea to have sleeves, even if they are um, like lace. Or I guess technically this is embroidered mesh. Let me show you this fabric that I have got. So I found this fabric at, uh, on, on Mood's website and I was like, uh, yes, I need it in my life. And so, yeah, I'm definitely going to have this as the bodice overlay. I just think it's the prettiest fabric. And it kind of has like... A gradient so that the density is thicker at one end and then slowly gets less. It's just really really pretty and I love the colors in it. Obviously it's mostly like a cream or white color so I think it'll still work for bridal. I was a little worried about it because I was like looking at it on the website and it looked kind of dark. Um, it's on like a blush mauve mesh so um, I'm not super concerned about that because it's like it's pretty thin you can only notice that it's like not white if it's bunched up pretty intensely but if it's just on a white background it's not super noticeable and then I also have this which is um, like Duchess silk satin I have six yards of that I have three yards of this um, I was kind of just guesstimating with these. I pretty much was like, I'm just going to order a ton and hopefully that's enough. Let me see if I can find the pattern that I'm using. Is it in this drawer? I don't remember where I put it. Yeah, so here's the pattern I'm using for the bodice. It's trying to focus on my face, so I apologize. Um, let me get the flat illustrations. So obviously it has like a, a really cute shape. I really like this shape. And then it also had the um, strapless look. And um, I think what I'm actually going to do, instead of using the strapless uh, top, actually it's not what I'm thinking about doing, it's what I am doing because I've been drafting it for the past couple of days. Um, so I'm not going to use the strapless part for the, um, like the solid fabric. Um, I'll use like this top for the lace on top. <laughs> I don't know if I'm describing this very well. Um, but then let me find this picture from my inspiration. So yeah, I don't think I mentioned, but I've just been like on Pinterest a lot. Um, finding inspiration for my dress and I I have 
found a lot of things that I like that have a lace overlay, which is how I decided I wanted to do that. That's like the look I want to go for with the solid, um, I guess like main white, white, white layer. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's what I'm trying to modify. I'm trying to modify the, um, the normal bodice to look like that. And here's a muslin of the actual bodice, kind of my size. Um, I'm going to have to make a few alterations to this whenever I want to make the overlay portion. Um, but I used it just to like draft out what kind of like V I wanted. I'm probably going to modify this because I don't think it looks good whenever it goes here. I think I'm going to move it like slightly up and then just like extend it. So that's what I'm working on drafting right now. So I, I did a muslin of the under layer with the main fabric. I've already ripped it apart as you can see. Um, Cause I um, I followed this tutorial and pattern review on how to fit a corselet for a fancy fancy dress. And so yeah this is what you're supposed to do. You pin it together and then like along the pins you mark a line cause then you know your, your new seam line that you would want. Um, so yeah, um, I have I have some boning in this because that's what the tutorial said to do if you are, you know, trying to make a muslin. And then you're also supposed to like pinch this in to make it... This is just for the inner lining layer, obviously. I'm not going to do this on the outside layer. Um, I kind of have some illustrations. This was whenever I wanted kind of a sweetheart neckline, but I think I want more of just a straight V instead of the sweetheart neckline. Um, so like this is the outer layer and it just looks normal. It doesn't have that, you know, pinch in the inside. And then you have an interlining, which would be made out of like a muslin and that has boning in the seams as opposed to the lining layer, which has boning, um, just like it's, just on the fabric itself instead of on the seams. Yeah, so this is exciting. And whenever I get this fit to look exactly how I want it, then I'll be very comfortable with cutting out my expensive Duchess satin that is made out of silk. Cause that's, that's some expensive fabric. So as you can see, I have the, this, fitting ready for my bodice and it's looking a lot like a lot better than it did the first draft um the only thing that I want to change is this so you can see it kind of I don't know it kind of like comes up at an awkward spot but I don't know maybe kind of looking at it now it kind of looks cute I, anyway, I, I pinned up this side and this side so you can see what they look like. I, I might end up taking this down a little bit um, just because I think that's an awkward height that it's currently at, but otherwise the fit is good. It's definitely like pretty skin tight, which is what you want for the, at least the, um, very inner lining layer and I I actually can start on the real fabric soon which is crazy it's pretty exciting bye hello it has been a while since I have updated you on my dress um, it's been like two weeks I think um, but honestly I haven't made that much progress so it's fine <laughs> Um, so, actually I should probably have set this up slightly differently to show off what I have so far. Um, I think the last time I updated I was like just about to cut out the silk and spoiler alert, I have done that and I am now like working on the actual bodice itself. So this is just the interlining which is going to be the part that will touch 
my body so um, this is going to be direct contact with my skin and this is the um, the main fabric of my dress. As you can see it's kind of sheer so obviously multiple layers are my goal. Um, and then so this is like the main uh, shape of the bodice and then I also have this inner panel um, the tutorial that I'm following on pattern review said to have something like this where it's just gonna like hold everything in place super secure and then the outer layer won't have to be as tight um, it's kinda like how some like with some uh, dresses you would put like a a um, like a grosgrain rib ribbon or something in there to sort of just like suck you in a little bit before you zip it up so nothing gets caught. So yeah, that's what that is for. Um, and I think it looks really good so far. Um, I, I did like some fitting things earlier this week, like two days ago, and I was really disappointed in the fit, but then I made like two very minor adjustments and it looks a lot better after that. I was kind of concerned about how sheer this fabric is. Like I kind of mentioned already, it is really sheer. Um, um, there will be an interlining that is made out of a muslin. Let me show you. I have the pieces cut out right here. This is the muslin, um, and I'm going to make an interlining out of this. That's my next step. Um, and I was, like, this isn't super opaque either, so I was also concerned about, you know, I don't know people being able to see through my dress but actually after layering it up for this like inner panel I can really tell so I what I probably should have done so the um, the way I sewed this together was um, I have one layer of duchess satin and then I have a layer of the muslin and then I have another layer of the duchess satin and then I just like turned in the edge and you can really tell this edge you can like very starkly see um, through this duchess satin but on this side you can't like on this half of the thing like this side looks better because um, the layer of muslin kind of covers the seam allowances I don't know if I'm describing this correctly but um, basically, I should have like made it so that the um, the layer of muslin was like one up and would be hiding this seam allowance here. But it's this is not going to show in the actual dress, so I'm not concerned about that. Um, but I do think this is really good because I can't see through all these three layers, and that's going to be the same number of layers that are going to be on the actual dress. So. I'm really glad that that looks good um, and then I have these hooks and eyes which I I did just try putting it on with the hooks and eyes um, I sewed these all on with a buttonhole not a buttonhole stitch I keep saying that a button stitch so just like the same thing you would use to sew on actual buttons I actually started sewing these suckers on by hand but that was a pain so I was like nah I'm just gonna sew them on and it, it was pretty fast Comparatively, it would have taken an eternity if I'd sewn them all, all on by hand. And you don't really see them. Um, I considered like covering this up. I might do that, but I'm not totally sure. Yeah, so it's going really well so far. My next step is sewing together the interlining pieces with the muslin. So I have to sew those together, and then after that, I will have the actual outer layer to sew. And then I can sew them all together. I first need to sew, oops, I first need to make some straps for this because I do want some really tiny straps. Um, but I need to get like a, a loop turner first because I, I really don't want to have to like, <laughs> I, I really just want to make that a lot easier for myself than every other experience I've had turning loops inside or right side out. After this, then I can finally move on to the lace portion. <laughs> This process seems to be going on so long. Um, like I knew it was going to take a long time, but man, I really didn't know how long. Um, I'm glad that like most of the fitting part is done. Um, 
the there isn't gonna need to be a whole lot of fitting in the skirt I don't think I did buy some like muslining fabric from the thrift store for the skirt because I don't want to have like I want to have the right level of fullness I don't want it to be like a crazy poofy this but I do want it to have some movement and be like really nice yeah I'm excited it's gonna be nice yeah, and I guess I'll update you whenever I have like all the bodice pieces sewn together. Hey guys, it has been quite a while since I have updated on the whole like wedding dress situation and whatnot. Um, and long story short, I pretty much just decided kind of to start over. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll just pull out what I have because I don't love it um, and it's just like it's kind, it was kind of hard to like figure out how it would look on me like um, I, don't, I just don't like don't know how to describe it it just like bunched up weirdly and I think it's because I had like I have like a had like a v-neck shape and this is a a strapless a strapless bodice uh, essentially there there are straps on it but it it's not held up by those um, and I don't I just don't think that the v-neck worked very well with that um, like all that structure because it kind of like pulled in the center and it just like I didn't like it. <laughs> So what I'm going to do, what I did was I ordered this pattern. I do have plenty of fabric to make it. I think if I'm reading the pattern correctly, we'll see. <laughs> but anyway, the um, so yeah, I ordered this pattern, and I won't have to worry about doing like any boning or any like super crazy structure. Um, so that's gonna make it a lot easier, and I can actually like figure out what it looks like on its own because I'm not like, I don't know, having something that's strapless or that has like built-in foundations is something that I'm not super familiar with I've never really done before like I have done like I've made bras before and I've like I've made a ton of those and I'm really comfortable with doing that um, but I guess I'm just like not comfortable with taking that and then also a piece of clothing and like putting them together so um, I decided I'm not gonna do that since I'm not comfortable with it and I will just make this dress and I really like the shape of it it was actually a contender originally um, but I was just like oh no it's not exactly what I saw on Pinterest so actually there are some dresses that are really similar to this that I put on Pinterest um, and I was actually thinking after I like decided to trash that one, I was like, I don't know if the really low V neck is what I, or like the really subtle V is what I want. I kind of wanted like straps like this, like exactly like this. And then I remembered that that pattern existed. And so I ordered it. So now what I'm going to do is iron these pattern pieces out. And then I'm gonna try to trace out my size and then we're going to try to muslin it again um so yeah I'm pretty much like starting all over which isn't super fun but like what can you do so I'm, I'm just really hoping that this will go better than um than the first try I'm, I'm expecting it will just because this is something a little bit, I'm a little bit more comfortable with. Um, I was following like some random tutorial, like I said. But yeah, so um, I will definitely update whenever I'm like further along in the process, possibly whenever I actually have like a muslin to try on. That's probably when I'll update. So yeah, bye. The last time I updated, I was working on a muslin of the new bodice that I was gonna make. And I actually have 
the real bodice ready to go. Um, and I have this dress form now, which is great. Um, I was gonna like make a dress form from this dress form pattern, um, but that I realized that would be a lot of work, um, especially whenever I'm making my wedding dress. Um, but my mom found this at the thrift store for like really cheap and so she gave it to me. It's like, it is an adjustable one, but whenever I put it to the maximum measurements, it's still a little bit smaller than me, so, um, oops. So this does not quite fit um, my dress form as well as it will fit me. Uh, it's like a little bit loose on my dress form, as you can probably tell, but it fits me a lot better. Um, so I don't have to like try anything on uh, for the camera or anything, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, so I have this. Let me just turn this puppy around. And then obviously this is unfinished. This needs a zipper. And I'm going to cover a little button to go right here so that the fabric, so, you know, like it'll match or whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's... That's the main bodice section. Um, let's see if I can re rotate this back with my single hand. Um, and I have also been working on the outer overlay. Um, so I've been working on the darts on this. So this is actually, the pattern I'm using for this is the named Canerva top. And it's like a button back top. And I made this as part of my make nine last year, not like this, obviously. I made this top and I really hated it, but I think <laughs> it's mostly because of the fabric and it was like shorter than I expected and it just like wasn't what I expected, but I think the pattern will work really well for this fabric. And um, yeah, so I've been working on the darts and since this is like a, here we go. And since this is like a sheer embroidered mesh, I'm using like a special technique so that you don't really see the dart, because there's a dart right here. Um, for like, I don't know, most laces or, I don't know, for, for a lot of fabrics that are like this, um, they would have a little bit more going on all around and you can sort of like fold it and cut around the motifs and then never have any lines. There we go. I, I will have like this little bit of a line. Um, I don't think that'll be terribly noticeable over top of the white because um, the darts are only going to be in the areas where there will be the like silk background. Um, so that will make it slightly more noticeable but other than that these are like fully cut out. So let's see, is this a good example? I, I have it pretty much everything pinned down, but basically you like cut around each motif and then you stitch around the edges so that it stays down. And then I haven't done this to either of these darts yet, but I'm gonna trim off like this excess piece and then it'll be less, less bulky and it won't really look like there's a dart there like this. This looks really good, and I wasn't expecting it to look that good. I was like, oh, that's going to look really weird. But it actually kind of looks normal. <laughs> so that's good. Like, I, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, this one is sewn up. I'm just going to take the guide stitching off. I, I, like, looked up a tutorial that said to do some guide stitching in a contrast thread to sort of help guide you. Um, my fabric's a little weird, so I had to, like finagle some stuff so like this <laughs> this one is like it's moved over the right amount but as you can see like I'm not gonna like do a dart across this beautiful flower although this one I did like cut let's see let me show you what I did so this one I cut around this section and then just sort of moved it over so this petal is smaller than it's supposed to be but it looks normal um, yeah, so that's that's what I've got done so far. Um, it looks really beautiful on top of the bodice so far. And um, 
So yeah, then I'll start working on the back. And I don't think I don't think there's darts in the back, although there it's possible that there might be. I'm not really sure. Um, but if there are, they shouldn't be that tricky. And then I can work on the sleeves. And I, I'm just really happy with how this looks so far. It's so pretty. I could do like anything with this fabric and it would look amazing because it's such a pretty fabric. Um, but yeah, it's going really well. I'm so glad I started over because that first bodice that I had just looked super lumpy and bumpy and just not right. And this one's gonna look so much better. So yeah, I'm really happy. I will check in whenever I have a little bit more done on the overlay. And then I will start working on the skirt, which also I think will go pretty well because I already have a plan for that. <laughs> All right, thanks. I'll talk to you later. Bye. What is up? It is um, another day. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure this will, I'll say this in like every single clip, but I don't remember where I last left off with my dress progress, but it's coming along fairly nicely. So as you can see, I have like the overlay pretty much done. I finished off the neckline. Um, just trying to twist this around. I finished it off all the way around. And I have actually hand stitched this um, to the silk right up to like the shoulder edge where they um, where they meet up and then obviously I did not attach it around this area so this is like this is attached fairly nicely um, I have some short sleeves I had uh, long sleeves on at first um, I just used like the the named Canerva top and I used the sleeves I used the sleeves as they are from that but um, I'd, I'd never planned on keeping them long and also I was having issues like it was like a little bit tight around my forearm so <laughs> I was like I might as well just snip these off right now um, but I have not finished off the edges for that and I will probably end up making them slightly shorter too um, let's see so other than that the progress I've made I I did a few more adjustments to like the silk area there was just like some some weird fit issues with the bust area. Like there were some parts that were a little too loose and some parts that were too tight. So I just tweaked that a little bit last night. Um, there is something that I need to fix right there. But anyway, so after I did that, I stitched up the lining to the outer layer of the fabric together. Um, the, uh, the, the lace or embroidered mesh is not attached. I did pin it though, so it's sort of secure. And my next step is actually going to be inserting the zipper. I'm gonna show you how I'm going to work on this whole situation. Because, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but it's like a very obvious pattern. And I did make sure that this could match up um, like the pattern would be matched. So uh, the next step for me is to go ahead and sew the the line or not the lining, the outer layer and this lace layer to the zipper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna baste these two layers together with like the same very loose stitch. Um, but but I'm also going to make sure that the basting line, like, it uh, tells me where I need to lay my zipper for the pattern to match as well. Because that's obviously going to be really important. Um, there's not like a whole lot to match. I made sure that whenever I cut the pattern's pieces out, that there wasn't a whole lot going on. There's like these tiny, tiny leaves, but these are going to be hidden. So I don't really have to worry too much about those. You can see a little bit right here, that's going to end up being cut off because um, the actual edge is, well it's going to be slightly further in, but this is essentially like an approximation of the edge that will be finished off in the same manner as the neckline. And then I will be, I'll have the back pretty much completely done. This is like definitely the last few steps in this bodice. Um, it's pretty much all done. I think it fits okay, but it's really difficult to tell 
when you don't have a zipper. Um, so yeah, I that's my next step. I'm just like using some hand sewing skills to make everything look really nice and precise. So that's basically where I'm at with this project right now. Um, I think it's looking really nice. Um, after I finish finish up the bodice, I will move on to the skirt. And I am going to be using the um, the skirt from the Deer and Doe. Uh, which one is it? It's the Magnolia. <laughs> because <clears throat> the skirt that comes with the bodice of this dress that I'm making, it is actually supposed to be like a full circle skirt. And that only works if you have... Um, fabric that's 60 inches wide or larger and my fabric is not that wide. Like the silk that I bought for the drip, like the main duchess satin, the lining which is a silk crepe de chine, and then the outer layer which is just like a, a chiffon. So those are all like 45 inches wide so it's not gonna work with a with a um with a circle skirt, so I'm scrapping that whole uh, that whole idea, and I'm just using another pattern that I know the skirt looks nice on. So that's where I'm at. I'm really happy with it so far. It feels like so much work has gone into it because a lot of work has gone into it. Um, but I think I'm getting close to the finish line, and just like with wedding planning in general, there's like. It's, it feels like there's so much left to do, but I've gotten a lot done so far. Alright, so I'll update you guys after I'm pretty much done with the bodice, I, I think. Um, and then I'll move on to the skirt. Exciting times! Goodbye. So I keep forgetting to update you guys on my progress with the dress. Um, I don't think I've gotten too much further than what I said I would update you next, but... Um, let me just show off what I've got. The bodice is pretty much done. Um, this is not the right fabric for the skirt. This is just the muslin skirt part. Um, but yes, I have the bodice done. It matches up really nicely right here. But I also like made sure that the zipper would go over in a spot that doesn't have that much to match up. Um, so yeah, it looks really nice. It fits me a lot better. Like, it fits me personally a lot better than it does this mannequin. My shoulders are a little bit higher up um, than this mannequin. Uh, the only things I have left to do on the bodice are to finish the sleeves. Um, I need to add a little hook and eye right here. And then I'm also considering adding some clear elastic just like along this edge because it does gape open just a little bit um, whenever it's on me. Um, so that'll kind of help out with that issue. But other than that, it's pretty much done. Um, this is the skirt, the full length skirt from the Deer and Doe Myosotis, I think is how you say it. Um, oops. Actually, I, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same because I, I basically just took the shorter version which I already had cut out and I just like drew over it and then like extended it myself so it might be slightly off but um, I like the way it fits and I did add like a little tiny bit of a train I'm sorry for showing you my gross laundry um, I did add a tiny bit of a train um, to my back pattern pieces um, so I'm not like totally sold on a train, whether or not it's important or good, <laughs> but I um, I have one drafted in just in case and it's not like anything too crazy, it's just like a little bit. Um, my mom is like super convinced that it needs to have a train, but I'm just like, that seems like it would be so annoying to have to deal with day of, because then like you have to bustle it and it's just like, I, what if it gets all gross and dirty? Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna see how this looks, um, and if I like it, then great. If I hate it, then I can just chop it off and it'll be fine. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's my current plan. So I have it drafted, like the skirt looks nice on the mannequin. 
I have I have the pieces cut out of silk and I ooh, just fell and I searched the edges of every piece um, oh I also had to modify this is um, the center back I had to add a seam up the uh, the center back because it I need I need the seam for the zipper um, so my next step is just to like sew these all together and that shouldn't take terribly long I mean doing the uh, what's it called the serging of the edges took like no time at all and then that's the lining fabric I have chiffon layer in there somewhere I am a little bit concerned about the sheerness of this because you can't tell it is kind of sheer um, that's why I have a lining and the lining is a little bit closer to my skin color than this fabric is but it's not quite as close to my skin color as I'd like it to be ideally because that would make it look a little bit less obvious if my um, if my two layers aren't totally opaque which I don't think they are I don't think they are totally opaque um, so I guess that'll just be something I can see if I need to deal with later I mean I can always add like I don't know another layer to the skirt if it's totally necessary that's just not something that I was planning on doing um, but if I need to then it's fine so yeah I'm getting pretty close with this project honestly like I don't think the skirts gonna take terribly long especially because I'm not gonna do any crazy like hand finishings on the seams for the skirt um, when I was looking online some of the suggestions for finishing off um, Duchess satin were kind of like crazy uh, like uh, sorry one of the pieces fell all right, we're kind of crazy like hand sewing things and I am not into spending hours and hours of my life hand sewing and I think the the serge edge looks fine it's not gonna be too bulky I don't think it'll be fine yeah so that's where I am I have Monday off this uh, this coming week it's Friday right now so um, I'm getting a lot done tonight tomorrow I have a cake tasting um, and then like Saturday and Sunday always go by so fast and I like never get anything done so it's, it's been tricky but Monday I have the full day off and I will be working on this nonstop because my fiance does not have off so I don't have to spend any time with him love ya don't want to spend time with you this Monday because I have to get this done <laughs> all right so that's where I am I'm really happy with the progress so far looking good I'll check in maybe whenever I'm done with the like the main skirt part I don't know we'll see if I remember to do that bye hey so um, I have made some more progress on the dress um, let me see am I zoomed out oh yeah I'm, I'm zoomed out all the way so um, I think the last time I updated I might have either and start like starting to sew together the silk layers um, or might have just finished I'm not sure but I actually had to um, rip out all the seams on these layers on or at least the outer layer um, because it was like completely see-through and I could like right here I could see the lace underneath um, so what I did was I got this, let's see, I got this pink fabric just from Joann's. Um, I wanted something that was relatively close to my skin tone. Um, and then I just underlined the silk satin and I re-sewed everything. Um, I also added some pockets in. I have to cut the, like the, or seam rip open the uh, opening for the pockets but they are in there um, I'm really happy with how the drape is actually with this extra fabric um, it's not like a very nice fabric or whatever it's just like super cheapy polyester <laughs> to be completely honest but you're not 
gonna see that either from the inside or the outside because there is also a separate lining so yeah I'm not even that's not gonna touch my skin at all anyway so it doesn't really matter but it looks good so far and it's I'm definitely happier with the opacity of this and I'm happy that I can have some pockets um, the next step for this skirt is the chiffon outer layer this skirt is just gonna have like so many layers to it um, it's gonna have like four um, I've said I'm considering like applique or not appliqueing but like cutting out some of the embroidery from the embroidered mesh on the bodice and like continuing it onto the skirt um, and after I have a chiffon layer, I will see how I feel about that, but I actually really like the way it looks with it just on the bodice right now, um, but it's hard to make a judgment without the chiffon layer. It looks really nice though. I'm going to have to obviously leave a hole in the chiffon layer for pockets, and then also just like a spot for the zipper. Um, but yes, it looks very good. Um, I think before I attach the skirt to the bodice, I'm going to hem these sleeves because I think it'll just be a huge pain to try to hem those um, whenever everything is attached. So, yes. So, I have the full chiffon layer done and it has, you know, little slits for pockets and then a slit for a zipper and I also um, used some of this embroidery from the bodice overlay as like an applique and I hand stitched all of that onto the skirt which took a really long time but it was pretty relaxing actually so it was kind of nice um, I wasn't like hi there I wasn't like bent over my machine the whole time because obviously you don't want to like I don't know mess up the chiffon so I'm getting really close basically um, I basically just have to attach the bodice to the skirt and then insert the zipper um, and then I just need to hem it and it is done which is really exciting um, now the only thing that might cause me any issues is the fact that I have not planned out how these appliques will match up with the floral motifs on the dress, but I actually do have a really good plan to try to remedy that without having to redo anything. So basically my next step is going to be to take this chiffon layer and sew it to the um, the other, the next skirt lining, or skirt layer, which is um, just the duchess satin and the layer of like interlining fabric that I have to make sure that nothing is see-through. Um, so I'm going to stitch those two together and then I'm going to sew that piece to the bodice but I'm going to exclude the um, overlay piece. So I'm just going to be sewing this just to the main layer of the bodice, not the lining. Um, the lining will be done separately, so it will be just be sewn to this single piece. And then I can um, take the overlay and put it over top of this, um, all this embroidery. And then I can sort of like, I don't know, cut stuff out and like attach it to the chiffon layer. And I think it will work a lot better that way. Um, and if there's any parts that look kind of weird, I can always take some more of these pieces, which I have plenty of this fabric left, so I can kind of mess around to my heart's content um, just to make sure nothing looks too weird. Like, I don't know, there's two big flowers here, but I don't know, that could be, be kind of nice. I don't know, depending on just how that looks. Um, so yeah, that's my plan. I think that's probably the best approach and it will require not a ton of like reworking anything. Um, it seems pretty straightforward and I'm really glad I thought about that. Um, I'm really glad I thought through that, uh, that construction order because I think it'll be way easier that way rather than try to like 
I don't know, just like seam them together. And it could look fine if I just seam them together, but I feel like I could be bothered, like pretty annoyed by the way it looks if it doesn't look perfect. So yeah. Um, also, I got my wedding shoes in. Let me see if I can pull them out. They are clogs. Isn't that cute? Got the mid heel because I do not wear high heels that often, so I needed something sort of like in between. And also, I'm pretty tall, so I don't need like any help in the height department. Anyway, I will update you hopefully um, when I have the the two skirt layers attached, and then those layers are attached to the main bodice layer. Bye! Alright, so it is the weekend, so I am obviously spending like all my time working on my dress right now. Um, and I thought I would just update you guys how it looks so far. So, um, I just folded up the bodice layer of the embroidered tool. Um, and as you can see, I'm like sort, well, I don't know if you can see, but I'm just sort of trying to line things up and um, figure out like what needs to be removed from the skirt section and then what needs to be removed from the bodice section and then like what I need to add in between to like sort of make everything match up. So obviously the zipper is not inserted in the back um, and I do actually need to pull this side up a little bit so that the um, the outer layers of chiffon line up correctly but that's not a huge issue so yeah um it's looking pretty good i actually last night i actually did like stitch down the bodice layer to the skirt layer but i wasn't super happy with it because there was like um there was like a chunk of lace of like embroidery right here that just kind of like seemed out of place um and th there was just like things that I wanted to remove just before I finalized it. Sorry, my coffee table's really long. Um, so yeah, it's looking pretty good. I have pockets in here. Um, and it's definitely, I'm definitely really, really, really happy with it. I tried it on a couple times last night and I think it looks so pretty. Um, it definitely, um, Probably should have tried hand sewing the bodice section to the skirt while it was still on the dress form because um, I did just like hand sew it whenever it was like in my lap and that didn't work out super great, obviously. So yeah, my next step is I'm going to, I'm just going to like sew a little bit further to pull this into the seam so you can't see that anymore. Um, and then I'm also going to fix that part that I pointed out in the back just by pulling up the skirt layer just a little bit um, just so it lays a little bit more flat. And then I'm going to put this back on the dress form and then hand sew this bodice layer onto the skirt layer so that everything stays like together and doesn't move around in anything. Um, so yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. I'm really happy with it. Um, I, it is like on this side, it is like the lace goes down a lot further than on this side. Um, I'm not sure if I like that or not, but yeah, I don't know. I think it still looks good. I just have to decide on that. But other than that, I'm getting super, super, super close. I obviously have to insert the skirt lining. I don't like suit, like need it for um, any like transparency issues with the skirt now um, since I had that underlining but I think it'll be nice to have it that layer against my skin still and obviously it'll finish everything off on the inside really beautifully so yeah so I have not done an update I don't think since I originally sewed together the the bodice and the skirt and as you can see I am done with that um, I have pretty much everything done. The, the only thing that's left is uh, I have to hem the chiffon layer. I got my mom to help me like 
mark the skirt at a good length with the shoes uh, whenever I was wearing the shoes that I'm planning on wearing day of. So I hemmed the lining layer separate from the outer layer which is including the um, the underlining. Um, and yeah, I, I am going to attach the lining to the main piece, like just at the seams. I will do like a little thread chain just so everything, you know, stays together. The outer chiffon layer, I'm not going to attach that. Um, I still have to figure out the best approach for that. Um, thankfully, I have like a little bit of extra fabric, um, <laughs> which I can use to like play around because I have heard that you can um, hem chiffon on the serger with a rolled hem. So I'm going to try that out with my, um, with my machine and then some leftover fabric and see how that goes. But yeah, it's turning out really good. I thought I would film an update while it's still light out. I've mostly been doing the hand sewing portion or like the hem portion. Um, I've been doing all that by hand and just like sitting here on the sofa while I watch YouTube. Um, so I haven't really done a ton of updates. It hasn't been super interesting thus far. Um, the only other thing to note is that the hem of the chiffon layer isn't cut yet. I'm going to put my dress back on the dress form and then figure out like the way the train should look for um, the chiffon layer because it's going to be a little bit larger than the the train for the other piece or like the I don't know the main fabric sorry I just dropped a pin <laughs> and then after I'm done hemming I will need to figure out the bustle situation and then I will be done officially I definitely want to get a different hanger to take like photos and stuff but I got uh it came with the like garment bag so I was like that works for me anyway I should probably stop rambling and go get some stuff done because I need to go to the gym later today. All right, I will update you shortly. Thanks for watching. Bye. All right, so I'm about ready to start cutting the hem of the chiffon layer. Um, it's a little bit longer than the rest of the skirt, as you can see. Um, and I think I am going to ex extend it a little bit past the rest of the train um, for at least like for the back, but for the front it'll obviously be the same. I have a thread chain attaching the layers at the um, at the seams, although I might end up, you know, like attaching a little bit more in the back because like the the top layer does tend to pull past the um, like like this. It'll tend to show off the lining sometimes, so I think in the back I might add a little bit more. I don't think it'll be as much of a problem in the front but for the train like as you can see um, it tends to show the lining a little bit so I will add a little bit more like a little bit more security there just so that those don't that doesn't show through. So yeah the next thing I'm gonna do is actually um, cut out the shape of the skirt or like the back of the chiffon layer and then I'm gonna sew it. I have, I did some test runs on a scrap piece of chiffon. I'm gonna put it on my knee so it's easier to see and so I can focus on it. Okay there we go. So this side is um, a serger rolled hem and it's a little uneven and I don't really like the way that looks and there wasn't really much I could do to prevent it from being uneven like it's kind of random and I couldn't really tell like what situations it would be like that but I can get a little bit more control with this tiny hem with um, with my normal sewing machine. It is a little bit more work because I have to stitch over it twice but that's fine. Yeah so I mean it's still gonna be less work than hand sewing it so yeah that's what I'm gonna go for in terms of the hem. Um, I just have to cut it out next, and then I will sew it, and I am almost done. I just have to figure out how to bustle this, because I don't think, I don't know how easy it's going to be to bustle it on my own, because 
obviously the length is going to be different when it's on me than it, when it's on the dress form. Um, maybe I just need to get my mom to help me with that. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm up to next. I actually remembered to update this time. Okay, I'll talk to you later after I have the chiffon layer done. Hello! So it is almost actually pretty much exactly like a year after I, um, well actually it's even longer than a year since I recorded the last part, um, because it's, today is Friday and my anniversary is actually on Monday, so it's been almost a full year since, uh, I actually got married, so actually a full year since I have worn my dress and actually been able to experience it, and I realized I never actually wrapped up this whole, I don't know, video about my dress, and I never talked about how I did the bustle. I do have my dress right here. Let me pick it up. So, I'm going to try to show how I did my bustle. I don't specifically recommend this approach. My issue was, I a lot of the bustles, they have you bringing up fabric up to the waistline from the skirt, and because of the way, like, it's not very defined where the waistline is on this dress. I didn't really like that approach specifically. So the approach I went for was I sort of like went to the bottom. I didn't want it to look like it had a bustle really. Um, so I pulled it under to make sort of like a bubble hem in the back. And it worked okay. Like it did the job, I guess. But I did, it did like come undone a few times because I just have some like, let me see if I can show you. So as you can see, I just have these hooks and eyes on the inside of the dress. And the way that worked was that, I mean, the way it actually like worked in practice was whenever I stepped back, it was kind of easy for me to step on the dress on the inside because it wasn't like smooth. There was like a folded up layer of fabric that my shoe could get caught on. And it did, there was like a few parts of it that came undone a couple of times throughout the night. It wasn't like a huge disaster, but I would just recommend like thinking about the bustle a little bit more than I did. I kind of tried to go like my own way and it just like didn't work out perfectly. Um, I mean, obviously do whatever you want <laughs> if you're making your own dress, but uh, I just like generally wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend rethinking it if you were trying to do something similar to me. Um, overall, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I will insert some pictures of like the, you know, like our wedding pictures. Um, I do want to talk about a few things that I didn't notice until the pictures were done that I kind of wish that I had changed. And I don't think these things are, like, they didn't, like, ruin the dress. I think overall I'm super, super, super happy with how this came out. Um, but I think if I had done a few things differently, it would have just been, like, you know, flawless. And I am, I don't know, I really want to be able to, like, I don't know, share that knowledge just in case anybody else wants to. So I'm not like bashing my dress, obviously. I really love it. Um, but just in case you're about to do a similar project, I think you should keep these things in mind. So one of the things that I noticed in my pictures was the, um, this V was like, tended to get a little bit crushed. Like it would like, I don't know, like sort of smush in a little bit like that. And I think the reason that happened was because the outside layer is maybe just like a smidge too tight. 
So if you're doing something similar where you have an inside layer where it's opaque and an outside layer that's sheer or some, you know, some similar type of application, just try to make the outside um, part a little bit larger than you would need, like if it was actually fitting you, um, like actually on your skin, just so that there's room for your, un like the garment underneath to move around. Especially because these are two different, like totally different patterns, I think. Um, it didn't really leave a, a ton of room for like movement with the actual under layer. The other thing I had issues with were the pockets. Um, I think the, the this technique works really really well um, generally for really light fabrics if you didn't have this um, like applique essentially on it which is what I added and there were some pictures where they were like sticking out or something. Also, this one got caught on a door handle, but that was just like me being clumsy. That's like totally something else. Um, yeah, so these tended to stick out a little bit kind of weird, and I think had I um, waited to put the appliques on these pockets until the skirt was sewn onto the dress, I could have um, sort of messed with that a little bit more and made it lie a little bit more flat against my body. And those are pretty much like the two main things that I notice in my pictures that I'm like, oh, I probably should have done that a little differently. Otherwise, I'm super happy with how it turned out. Um, a year later, I'm very glad that I like took the time to actually do this. I don't think that um, I would have been as satisfied with a dress that I hadn't made. So I'm just like really happy that I went through all that turmoil to end up with this you know, unique dress that nobody else is going to have. I'm, I'm just really happy with it. Yeah, I hope you enjoy the pictures that I am going to show of our, I guess, our, our wedding. And just like, they'll mostly be of me probably because I don't want to like, I don't know, put anybody's picture on the internet if they're not into it. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoy, uh, enjoy this video or hopefully learn something from it. Um, hopefully I'll be back to making a few videos soon. Um, kind of took me a while to get like, I don't know, used to living in a different area and now with all the crazy things that are going on in the world, um, I don't know, it's just been really weird. So, but I hope you're doing well and thank you again for watching.